in a world. Four friends, one mission. Mikey, what are you doing? I'm doing the thing for the podcast. It's not that hard, bud. Dude, just say the name. Fine. It's the Freedom Friends Podcast. Holy shit, it's the Freedom Friends. Tell your mom I'm coming to visit where the kids came from right after these messages. Zing. Going to dad's house? (laughs) (laughs) Specifically dad's balls. Specifically. (laughs) Yeah, quite specifically. Guys, it wouldn't be the Freedom Friends if we didn't talk about our number one sponsor, Warfighter Tobacco. Obviously, you guys have seen us all smoke them. We're here to talk about a quality product that everybody can enjoy. The great equalizer, as we've called it, the Warfighter Tobacco Stick. And it's not just cigars. They've got humidors, travel humidors, cutters, lighters, everything you need to get started on that journey. Check out warfightertobacco.com and use that code FTFO. Score yourself that sweet, sweet 15%. If you want to know my personal favorite, I'm a 762 field guy. I like that Sumatra, real nice and even keeled cigar. Great for us beginner smokers, right? And I'm told that these taste even better when you're listening to the Freedom Friends podcast. Now, back to the show. This episode is brought to you by Grill Your Ass Off. It's no secret. We're all middle-aged dudes who love barbecue. Grill Your Ass Off is our name, main go-to for our spices. That's what we use, man. Whether you're doing burgers on the grill, steaks, or my personal favorite, a little bit of pork belly burn ends, right? They've got you covered on all of that. They also have salsas. They also have seasonings and spices. They got beer salts. They've got everything, man. Check them out. Grillyourassoff.com slash Freedom Friends Podcast or use the code Freedom Friends Podcast at checkout. Uh, we haven't been together for a while. All four of us. I like how you put it like that. Man. Yeah. Yeah. The four of us have not. I mean, I've, how many How many did I miss? Three? Three. Yeah. I missed three episodes. No, three episodes missed you, Mike. Oh, thanks, buddy. Thanks, pal. You were gone? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been here the whole time. I've just been quiet. <laughs> I gave up jokes for Lent. Yeah. That's what it is. I gave up comedy for Lent. I gave up giving up. <laughs> yeah it's a good move it's a good move i just gave up <laughs> uh john what was our plan with lint that we were going to try things we weren't supposed to do during lint so that, that way we knew yeah so we lived better yep. lives outside we were gonna of those do things like this that's that's what you just did like. debauchery for yeah. 40 days so that you learned like okay it's these like, are sins oh. like you would not need to participate i'm in, in. so what that's you actually during so black tar heroin <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> you know, it's, but it's, okay. Okay. it's okay. It's Lent. for Lent. Yeah. Right. So it's it's forty days, and it's like it's I'm like, gonna, hey, you want to worship Jesus and die? Yeah. Right. So for forty days, you're just fucked up. So that the other three hundred and twenty five, you know, you need to live a better life. It's, just yeah. a, it's just a, a better a lesson. It's not about appreciating you know, sacrifice. It's about people, maintaining my purity the rest of the time. I think people would look forward to Lent a little differently. Than Could you imagine the Lent plans? <laughs> just be I'm like, tell you right now, bro. <laughs> Catholics do not look forward to Lent. <laughs> no, I know, but now you might you might now. Until the purge. It would, somebody would take it too far. Yeah. Oh, no, that's not too far. No, you're right. If we go to I the, think that's just no. right. We just I'm go only between a serial three killer. and seven in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I'm only I'm only a serial killer during Lent. Yeah. <laughs> uh shit. What is that? The, the Good Friday killer? I don't it just <laughs> fucking it just beats you to death with a fish. <laughs> <laughs> you know how embarrassed you'd be when you get to the gates? <laughs> They're like, like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I think you missed the idea, man. We're not going to let you in. It's like, why? Well, it's like, well, you were murdered, and that's horrible. But you let a man beat you to death with a fish. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, I thought it was a sunfish about- at that. <laughs> <laughs> so you talking about the murderer shit. Yeah. Nah, nah. No, he's good. They he's just, doing he, it for Lent. He gets to the gate, and they're like, I think... There was a misunderstanding. There was a miscommunication somewhere about what we were trying to get through. It's our land. fault. It's yeah. fault. Like, like, did, did you use Google Translate on the Bible? Oh, <laughs> that's what it yeah, was. That's what it was. Yeah. Latin's tricky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how was uh, how was Red Next? Uh, Red X is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was really, really wet the last day. Yeah. And so like... I saw your shoes sitting back there. Yeah, and we didn't even go in the mud pits. <laughs> it was just the roads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But no, it was nice. a lot of fun. It always is. Um, met a couple. Uh, one guy, I'm just walking around, not wearing anything to give me away. And he's oh, I was smoking a cigar. But he's like, you Scott? Like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I listen to the Freedom Friends. 
And he's a deputy sheriff uh, out of Oklahoma. Oh, and no he shit. offered us all. He's a day shift guy, though. But he offered us all ride alongs if we ever want. Oh, is that where that message came from? Probably. Because all of a sudden, the like, I, my because we're all logged into the fucking Facebook page. And I never look. So. I, I don't either because typically he just responds to everything. So, but it came across, and it was, and it it was like it's usually me that responds. It was like follow up <laughs> ride along, and so oh, I got yeah, the yeah. it got Must my be. attention because it said follow up ride along, and I was like. What, what is, I'd like, I, I, this, this reminds me, I'd like to address something for the listeners out there. Um, people who see our micro content and then reach out to us saying, Hey, I want to be your video editor. Obviously we have one man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you saw it through our micro content on one of our social yeah, networks, we're scrolling your talk. Uh, I'm going to go on a fucking limb and yeah. say that, yeah, we probably already got one. I love the ones that were, like, we literally have a producer. So and right he's there. probably <laughs> the only one that pays attention to your message. Like, so. well, they, <laughs> they, they usually <laughs> send them to the email. Yeah. I, I like all four of these guys way too much to give anyone outside of this room raw footage. Yeah. <laughs> Facts, dude. Facts. Yeah. So. You think you saw the whole show. So you guys can stop asking. It's it's always going to be a hard no. Yeah. Like, not like, that we don't like you. We just have Justin. Yeah, we have Justin. Yeah. We have a Justin. We have fingers back there and we don't need. Holy shit. Speaking of our micro content. And I called you about that because yeah. I was yeah. so you proud. You insufferable edgelord. I was so <laughs> proud. We had to Google what edgelord lord. I didn't even know what it was. I had to go look do, it up. Do tell. Okay, so last week? Uh, this was last week, something way, like that. The t-shirt um, will be available soon. <laughs> uh, we were discussing on the show, uh, it was a longer conversation, but it had landed on uh, veteran discounts. Oh. And it was like a veteran company People ask us yeah. for veteran discounts and all that kind of stuff. And so I did the same joke that I do in my store all the time. And uh, Justin clipped that out and put it up as a, a micro piece. And he called me and told me, and he's like, just so you know, this is going out tomorrow. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool, whatever. So Why it, do you give him a heads up? You never give us a heads up. <laughs> I know, right, right, dude? What the fuck? But uh, it came across my FYP. And, uh, and so I was looking at and it did like, just come up like it because it, i had the timestamp on it or whatever and i was like oh you like just put this up. and it already had like 18 or 19 comments on it and yeah. i was like oh either people really agree or we made people the big fucking mad yeah because if you're if it's that fresh and it gets that many comments that fast oh, yeah, yeah. then it's typically like either people really liked it or you really piss some people off so it was in there and most of the comments were actually like this is awesome. It, yeah, they were, they were would, on board. They're like, like I'm going to do this like, too. Yeah, but, they were yeah. like, more, more importantly, they got the joke. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's and there was even like. guys on there that was like, hey, if you're mad about what that guy just said, these guys' humor is not for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, was like, so, but one of them was like, you know, you could just say no instead of being an insufferable edgelord. And I was like, oh, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> so he calls me and he happened to catch me. I was at lunch. So I was sitting in an office quietly by myself like the only part of the day and uh i'm like hey buddy and he's like i think he's I like peak internet that's what he says he goes i think i made peak internet and i was like did you go in the comments and he's like i did and i was like you know you're not supposed to do that and he goes yeah but this was fun yeah, <laughs> and he's like worth it. and he tells me and he's like some dude called me an insufferable edgelord and i was like i don't even know what that means yeah. I, like, I don't know what an edgelord is so what is it Apparently, it's it, it's not what we thought it meant. No, like, so I thought in context, it, was, it was like in the context of the comment, it came across about the whole like instead of just saying no, you do some big long drawn out explanation of yeah. something, uh, which holds weight. Yeah, it, it, yeah, for me, a hundred percent. Sure, it, like yeah, like we yeah. draw it out because you know it's a bit. Yeah, and I, <laughs> you know, like, Do you have fun. I say yes. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it turns How's out show? good. Yeah. yeah, it turns out that's not what an edge lord right. is. So an edge lord is somebody that goes on the internet and goes on like forums and stuff like that, and goes on and says shit that is contradictory or inflammatory for the purposes of looking edgy and cool, uh, like on to try the to like, forum uh, to try to get like a response, like a right. yeah. And it's supposed to be the whole like yeah. And I guess it's now it also expanded. I ran this by a bunch of fucking his generation people uh. to get translated. Someone and, uh, on the internet forum who deliberately talks about controversial, offensive, taboo, or nihilistic subjects yeah. in order to shock other users and in effect to appear 
cool or edgy. Or the definition up top, which is, by the way, this is from the Oxford Dictionary. A provocative or extreme persona, especially online, typically used of a man. So Edgelords act like con- contrarians in the hope that everyone will admire them as rebels. Okay, so Oxford, listen up. If you're going to define a word, you have to use words that everybody else understands. <laughs> it's oxford bro they, 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 don't, they can't even spell the fucking deal, color right if you read the definition and don't understand a word luckily it's the goddamn dictionary and you can go look up the other word <laughs> i didn't go there to fucking go down a rabbit hole uh, i went there to learn what one word means so, like 18 but i've now been called an edge lord uh but yeah i thought and i had this whole like response line but he's like i wanted to go but you're like that in person too yeah i'm not affecting a persona i I went a way different direction with edgelord not (laughs) (laughs) excited yeah yeah i was like how do you i bet that little huge like how does some of our (laughs) micro content turn into that i mean i could see how but (laughs) we don't kink shame we don't kink shame so yeah so i was gonna go like make a whole response till i figured out that it wasn't what i thought it was and then so i didn't yeah so we found a we found a term that Jazz didn't know the you, weird random definition of off the should, top of his edgelord, head. Edgelord, yeah. You should like be fucking edge, blib it. You should be an edgelord to a T. <laughs> you know what though? To him. That's what I was trying. That's what I, when I thought I understood what it was off the context <laughs> of the comment, I had this whole like like I have never made a TikTok. Yeah, he was uh, gonna actually, respond and I was to actually it. gonna go on my personal TikTok and stitch that TikTok, and then go like, "Hey, I'm Jazz, and this is this guy right here on the show. That's me." <laughs> and this guy made this comment that this guy, who's me, is an insufferable edgelord. Now, I don't consider myself a content creator or whatever, because I sit here and I talk. He yeah. makes all the shit. Like, yeah. I just talk into it. If anything, oh. Justin's the content creator. 100%. Yeah. I'm, I'm a prop on his show. Yeah. Like, that's, that's essentially how this really breaks down. Yeah. Um, and I was like, but I did go to film school. I did all this other stuff. So I do consider myself a creative and the ultimate goal of a creative is to elicit some sort of emotional response out of whatever media you make. It's kind of like you're. Yeah. So, but that was the whole point. There. So <laughs> I was like, so I want to elicit a response, whether that's positive or negative. And regardless of what that medium is, that's the goal of every creative, whether it's a painting or a drawing or a podcast or whatever it is, you want to create that. Yeah. In up to and including comments on the internet. Right. So I guess all of that is a really long explanation of saying, Hey, Thanks for the interaction. <laughs> that was the, that was the, uh, that was going to be my TikTok when we were like, Oh, this is what it means. So then yeah. fortunately I Googled it while I was on the phone with him and I was like, well, this doesn't match. <laughs> and he's like, what? And I read it to him and he's like, well, that's oh, fucking fuck. dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude, that's definitely not us. Like we don't Jeff, do it specifically. I do have either. to thank you for explaining what a blibbit is. Yes. You're welcome. I have used that. Word it is Scott's so new favorite word. And he uses it in the, like perfect context. But the, the thing is, and that's that's the power of something like the word blibbit. It's is usually that it's a, hey, you, you know what that is you're doing right there? That's <laughs> a you know, blibbit. Right? You know what that is? Yeah. Yeah. I, I did it one time. It's I, so I, applicable. I, I, I set I set it up, sent him a softball, and he fucking hit it out of the park. We were trying to load stuff in a vehicle out back last week or the week before. And uh, we were literally like what was on it was the Black Friday when we were you said it when we were loading the fucking No, no, that was bag. a different time. Yeah. This was we were loading somebody else's vehicle in the back. And uh we barely I mean, we had to put lube on everything to get it to fit. Nice. And as we got the door shut, I'm like, Scott, what's that called? And he's like, It's a blame it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh. So it's uh but yeah, I didn't know what the fucking edge lord was. But I have an employee that works for me that's like twenty three. And I told her and she was like hmm. No, she's like, you're not an edge lord, because and be, because it, it's it's specifically a channel. So it's like it's you have to be doing it on the Internet because you have the anonymity of right. the screen. But don't we like isn't that just a troll? But that's and I was like, that's what I said. I was like, that's a troll. And she was like, no, they're edge lords. And I was like, no, it's a troll. Yeah, it's it's like that's thing. an Internet. Yeah. Troll. That, the rule of the Internet used to be don't feed the trolls because yeah. like, yeah. if you just ignore them, they go away. Yeah, basically. But the other thing that I told Mikey was, I'm glad the peasants have now given me a proper title. If you want to refer to me as Lord, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, we need to, we need to make the shirt. Couldn't man. say it. I was like, we need to make the shirt. It's just John? an insufferable edge lord. I, 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 I'm okay. doing good. I'm okay. doing very good. Okay. This was a bad one. Words, yeah. words change over the the same word has different yep. has the same meaning, but changes the the word over time. Yeah. 
So speaking of which, like back in the. Yep. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. did. Get your button ready, Justin. What? I need a Nerf gun. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> when I start seeing John get there, just be like, here, got it. I'd run out of ammo with this I, one. I, 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 have a, I, have a, I need a belt fed one over here. Fuck. I have a story. So, inintentional racism. <laughs> inintentional? Okay, the, yes. the word you're looking for is unintentional. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> so, I don't disagree. All right. All right. Anyway. So we're at the show. Accidental? Accident? No, this was unintentional. Recreational? No, it wasn't recreational. Okay. It was unintentional. So we're at the it was an oops. We're at the show, and there's this weird motherfucker in our booth, right? And uh, he's not part of the industry or anything. He worked he for was, the union. He worked for the union or whatever, oh, right? It's one of the, the actual like show guys. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's sitting there, and Eric tells him a story, and he said, "I was in this shop in Atlanta, and there was two black guys." And then he went into his story. And it wasn't racist at all. It was just a story, right? But this guy, as soon as Eric said black guys, went down this racist fucking path like a son of a bitch. Just, it fucking devolved, right? And so I, when he left, I'm like, Eric, it's just two guys in Atlanta from now on. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't open any doors to anything. Yeah, dude, you, like, don't need, you don't need fucking adjectives on this one. No, <laughs> no it's just two guys. <laughs> like, I know you didn't mean it, but, you know. You well, look down at your shirt. See that logo on there? It, yeah. yeah, that means you got to watch what the fuck you're saying. Yeah. That's what. That's but that, I, he had no. Just tell me that there, there was no. There was no, there was no hate. The there was no hate. Just, yeah, no tell, ill intent. Tell him to clear his ears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, there's a. <laughs> we'll leave the mountains out of this. Yeah. yeah. Oh fuck. <laughs> oh, Speaking amazing. of, oh. I don't know if it was unintentional. I think it was just lazy. Did you guys see that? That Democratic senator. That is now under fire because of what he said, like in this briefing about the Republican Party and this move that they made. No, I am not going to say the word on this show because it is it is fucked. And the rest of the comments when I saw the video, can you redact? We're going to take a small pause so I can explain (laughs) this in context to my co-host here without this going on the fucking Internet. Okay. so now that I have brought you guys up to speed on this, and if you really want to go find out the rest of this, this clip that you can go find it. But we're. You can look up uh, David Trone. There you go. Senate remark. Uh, and this is a Democratic senator that said this. And the thing is, is that this, I'm sorry, but on a term like that, that is so old school racist. So without, I mean, when I brought with, it up with, to you, without, you were like. Without saying the word, he referred to a black Republican. No, no. As, the entire Republican Party. Oh, as a, as, 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 as a black con artist. Which, which is roughly what that term kind of does. It has other connotations. Okay. That's just like the kind of the surface one. But that is such an old school, horrible racist term that you didn't even know what it was. I had to tell yeah, you no like idea. what this thing was. What's his last name? Trone. I think it's Trone. T-R-O-N-E. Apparently he was looking for the word bugaboo. Yeah. Which means yeah. what? What does bugaboo mean? Like a bugaboo is like something. An imaginary bugs. object of fear. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, a... I don't fuck with rattlesnakes and condoms. Those are my two bugaboos. I guess yeah. I guess the moral of this story, kids, is don't try to use big words that you you're not real sure of. Like <laughs> be sure you know what the words mean before you use them. And it was I it was just I couldn't believe it. it like it was just yeah. and, and it was one of those that is so ingrained in this, and he's probably a 60-something-year-old white dude that just threw this thing out casually in the middle of the Senate. How old does somebody have to be today in order to be like yeah, they said it. I guess it's okay. You, you don't. You know what I mean? But I don't think there's actually, in my opinion, there's not an age break over. It was like. A racial epithet made popular in the it, 1970s it, it, yeah. by a man named George Jefferson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think there's an age break over where you get, where you can get away with it. Like you're, you're in it. Like say you're in an old folks home and some dude that's 98 years old has Alzheimer's and dementia. He gets a pass. Okay, but you're talking about somebody <laughs> that no. Saying, like, but you're talking about somebody that no longer has his like cognitive faculties. Right, right. But so, you know, that's like people with Tourette's where so, they fucking unhinged hey, shit and have yeah. no control. So you just gave Biden a pass. I'm just throw it out there. I, I'm not gonna lie. I've been saying for years <laughs> that I. He oh, gets, I thought you meant the racial. 
It, I mean. No, he gets a pass <laughs> just because I think this is elder abuse at this point. Yeah, like, like it, I don't it, like, like making fun of an old man in decline. And uh, you know, it's just. Like, but as far as like the ones that still have their foul, like I have older friends, and if they said some fucked up shit like that, yeah. and it's like, no, you don't get a pass. You know that that's not cool. Yeah. Like that's that's. Yeah. Don't have control of your brain. That's one thing. That's that's yeah. That's, that's something completely different, though. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, this is a senator. This is a like. Oh God, I just couldn't believe it. So, three weeks, man. Let's see here. I was in Boston for one week. Okay, that was interesting. It's well, good to be home. I can't remember why you were in Boston. I was there for work. Oh yeah, that's right. I was there for work, just doing oil and gas shit. Uh, interesting though. I stayed in Revere, but like literally, like worked all the way around Boston and ended up like ten minutes back from Revere. So yeah. it was like I ended up in like Method. Okay. So it was like wee, wee, wee. like so I just basically did a circle around Boston every day. Um, I will tell you this: I love this job, this new job. It's the easiest fucking thing I've ever done. <laughs> like I sit in my truck and just listen. It's so fucking easy, man. <laughs> like the only downfall is that I had a fucking Jeep Gladiator, which is oh, garbage. Hey. Yeah, it was garbage. That was the rental car I got. That was the only fucking bummer. But um, just when you thought they couldn't make a Wrangler shittier, dude, they figured it they out. They figured it out. We dude. rented a Gladiator when we went to Virginia, right? No, what, we rented one somewhere. Oh, where was that? And then the next time we went there, we rented a Range Rover uh, Defender, which was really nice. Actually. Yeah, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. That, it drove really good. Yeah. Where do we get that fucking Jeep? Yeah, I'm a. I'm not going to lie. I'm a huge Range Rover fan. Oh, that's Michigan. Yeah. Like anything made yeah. by. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is quality. Yeah. It's quality craftsmanship. Yeah. Well. But it, they're yeah. very comfortable. It, yeah. yeah. They're not the most reliable thing in the world, but fuck, yeah. they're nice. It yeah. drove nice. Oh, yeah. No, when they're functioning. <laughs> but Holy when, they, when, when we got when like they go down, miles on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you were fine. Yeah. When, when they go down, you better fucking you better take out a second mortgage. It's all those luxury brands. <laughs> yeah, that's like yeah, it's totally. really cheap to buy a used Mercedes, and then all of a sudden you have a twelve hundred dollar tune up, and you're like, "What the? Oh, excuse me?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And all they did was open the hood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was in Boston for a week, and then uh, I was home for one day, uh, and then I flew. Then I picked up Dave here on Saturday morning and drove to Florida. Right. And did the whole RSPD thing. But I got to tell you guys about week two uh, being in the, uh, my first week in at RCBT this time. You want to talk about. I got a pretty good fucking resume when it comes to combat. Right. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm no slouch. I'm usually, you know, oftentimes the big dick in the room when it comes to like, you know, the combat resume. I was not shit this time, dude. There's Let me always just, a bigger fish, bro. Yeah. You want to talk about getting humbled, dude. My, this is my squad, all right? I was a squad leader for the training. This was my squad. First and foremost, Congressman uh, Alan West was my student. That was his black hat, who, by the way, cool fucking dude. Yeah, yeah. Not, I've heard, I've heard not Batman. Not, not Adam West. That would have been awesome as well, RIP. But, but uh, Also creepy as fuck. Every time I hear fucking Adam I, West, <laughs> I think a family guy. But Alan West is, <laughs> Mayor Adam he West. is a fucking good dude, man. Yeah. Just cool as shit, fucking awesome. Guy was awesome. Um, and then the rest of my squad was nine of the 11 original Delta operators, the guys who did like Operation Eagle Claw, like into Iran and shit. Oh, really? Nine of those 11 guys were my fucking squad members. See, that was in 70, what, eight? Something like that. They were older. They're all in their 70s. Yeah. And they're like, let's jump. <laughs> like, cool. like, they were dope as shit. So those guys, uh, Kyle Lamb from Mogadishu was a student. Um, so Sergeant Major yeah. Kyle Lamb, I also not Rick Lamb, but they're homies. But um, and then uh, all of the horse soldiers, all of ODA nine five five nine five yeah. was there. And uh, dude, it, it was it was fucking the the the. I, I was, at one point I just stopped and looked around and I was like, where the fuck am I right now, man? <laughs> I was like, oh my god, dude, it was just so fucking cool. Um, just hanging out with those guys and there's a lot of opportunity that's coming up for uh the show as well as like you know uh they're they're uh they unfortunately already partnered with a cigar company i know and i was like damn it's, it's not a good cigar well, it's your old fucking i smoked it it's, it's your it's, it's your old good. it's your old brand no it's not it's no, a not. it's a florida minicana fucking thing no it's jc newman i think it's newman is that what it was yeah 
I don't know. They mentioned both of those names, so I'm not sure. I do like how they did it though. Like the band is like already it's like a prepared, so like you you just color match the band with the with the oh really with the fucking bottle. Oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? So I did kind of like how they did that. That was kind of dope. But um, I didn't smoke any of the cigars because I had Warfighter sticks there. So yeah. I, as you, you know me, boys, I'm gonna represent <laughs> for you. You know, always. Um, but uh, good fucking dudes, man. Good fucking dudes. And then uh, week three, my this last week, um. I wasn't a squad leader or anything. I was just kind of there as like a, as a jump master and doing just work. Right. But, uh, it, it was, it was definitely another fucking banger of a week, which is like, there was more fucking long tabs yeah. that I met the last fucking two weeks that were, that are uh, just have such impressive fucking resumes. Yeah. So I got a bunch of skydives. <laughs> no, I did a bunch of jumps. Uh, got a bunch of cool skydives. Got foreign jump wings, foreign free fall wings from Honduras. Oh, cool. Which was dope. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I had a couple of visiting members from the uh, Skyhawks, which is the Canadian military's version of like the Golden Knights. Oh, yeah. So fuck you, Quinn. I'm actually still fucking cooler than you in your own fucking country. <laughs> Douchebag. <laughs> fuck out of here. Yeah. So I got uh, I got their I wings as well. I literally forget he exists until somebody brings him up. I know, right? Um, I like you, Quinn. And then uh, I had a couple of um, I had a couple of Canadian students actually, too. Some some good dudes. I had like a Canadian PJ. How many times they have. I say sorry? Dude, funny enough, one of them straight out of fucking like letter Kenny, man. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Like hard yes. <laughs> and I was dying. It was funny. I was sitting there talking to him and he's like, he's like, Have you ever heard of that guy Angry Cops? <laughs> and I just, just start laughing and I was like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk to him a time or two. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um and then I attempted to FaceTime Rich at like 11 o'clock at night and I was drunk. So Rich, sorry, not that you're fucking going to watch this, but, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, it was a good time, man. I had a good time. Uh, speaking of Rich, he did reply. He said, I can come drive the fucking fire truck, but I have to stay in a parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> so no dice. Like not a, uh, not an apartment or anything. I might have another so. for that. Well, I I told you about I fucking had that customer that came in and it turns out he's like the chief engineer for SAPD or SAFD station one, which is like it's like the main one, right? The station yeah. where all the high speed shit. He actually brought me a so yes, I like fire truck. He brought me a hat for that's, Pierce. That's Jazz's autism. It is. Yeah. But uh it's patriotism. Patriot. You weren't here for that one. I saw the micro content. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. So, <laughs> Uh, but Pierce makes my favorite fire trucks. Yeah. And uh, so he brought me a hat like from Pierce fire trucks and stuff like that. And that was, it was super dope of him. But he told me that anytime I want to come down and play with any truck in their fleet, I just have to nice. show up. I'm surprised you're here right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have been, I have been very busy. Like when I found like the first time this conversation came up. All right. We all know, we all know and love jazz. But let's be real. Jazz often bulldozes a conversation with logic. What? The s- I have never. <laughs> but the second I brought up fire trucks, I've never seen glee <laughs> like that come out of that face. <laughs> they make me happy. And I was like, holy fuck, dude. This is like a legit love, man. This is a passion. And he's like, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, fucking I'm a, a, dude. I'm a big fan. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Hey, uh, buddy uh, on a... Uh, NBFD, Bronfus Fire Department. So, you let me fuck with fire truck. Well, um, I got to take a fire truck down a, uh, a runway in Belgium, so that was really fun. Dude, yeah. I just I want to I've 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 ridden in one. I've been on a bunch of them when they're just like standing still. Because uh, firefighters are fucking. They will absolutely show off their toys. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. If you go up and you yeah. show even a passing interest yeah. in a fire truck, they're just like, like you want to do the sirens and lights? You want to do the sirens? You want to climb up there? How about <laughs> this? Like, do you want to? I'll, I'll turn the hose on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How high can your ladder go? I'll show you. Come on. Yeah. Hop on. They'll let you yeah. climb all over it. And they're the first ones to be like, no, you go do whatever the fuck you want to. Because if you break it, it we have a severe issue. Because <laughs> anything yeah. that you're going to go do to yeah. it isn't as bad as it being in service. Yeah. So yeah. knock yourself out. They are super cool about <laughs> um <laughs> sharing their trucks. I ride by the fire station because I live like a mile from one and I ride by it. And uh, I've literally ridden by and like 
they've been out and I've like done this on my bike when I'm going by and they just start blaring all the horns and stuff. And I'm like, I'm a grown ass man still telling you to honk the horn on the fire truck. The thing is, they don't know that. <sighs> well, I'm on the, that's true. John. <laughs> what? I got us a little revenge yesterday. Oh yeah? Uh-oh. How? Well, as you guys know, I was driving back from Florida, towing an RV in my oh. Tacoma, getting a solid eight miles per gallon. Doing 65 in the left lane. Now, when I talked to only him, he was doing in, almost 80. Only in front of truckers. Fuck me. <laughs> and then me and another RV guy fucking did it. I did yeah, the you had fucking, a slow race the, on the highway. The one mile an hour fucking <laughs> faster thing. And the guy next to me laughing his ass <laughs> off. And we both knew. I, didn't, I have no idea who this person was. I, not even from Texas. He had like fucking like Georgia plates on or some yeah. shit. But we both fucking knew. And we fuck were like, this. fuck these guys. <laughs> 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 we fucking did it, man. It was awesome. <laughs> and I was just like. Ah, redemption. (laughs) Speaking of traffic, it reminds me one more time. I have to put this public service announcement out. (sighs) Hazard lights are not for rain. Mm. Oh, my God. You fucking idiots. It's not for rain. Amen. It's raining on everybody. If everybody put their hazards on, nobody would know what anybody else was doing. Yeah. Stop it. By the way, you've put your hazards on for me to see you, and now your blinkers don't work. Yes. Just so. I, I, I ran into this yesterday. I didn't see rain the entire yeah. drive until I got to just outside of Houston. Yeah. Which is literally the worst possible moment to have rain. Yeah, I right? think we went through It rain. always rains. <laughs> Dude. It, yeah. it was like. They built that thing in a swamp. 20,000 feet. Though. Yeah. <laughs> but like it was. Houston's built in a swamp. It was like, it was like between Vider and Houston when I yep. first hit rain, you know, and then it fucking it rained all the way until I got into like Katy. Because <laughs> that was, area that you beautiful. just described is, that's just Louisiana light. Yeah. You just haven't. Yeah. The highway's better, but it's still fucking, it's still just the bayou. I did think it was funny. Did you guys get the video that I took of Dave stepping outside of the vehicle to have a cigar while we were stuck in traffic on the way there? No. Why? You wouldn't let him smoke in your truck? I wouldn't let him smoke in our truck, in my truck, but. Would you smoke in it? No. What? No, I don't smoke in my truck. Are you fucking saving it for the next guy or what? Yeah. Pussy. <laughs> so, uh, anyways. That was like the biggest transition, though, when he went from the jeep to the truck because i went and get in his truck his first time and i think i had a cigar lit and i went and i'd ridden his in my, in his, in my jeep, jeep i didn't give a fuck because i used to smoke cigarettes and i got in it smoking i went to get and he was like you need to put that shit out and i was like i'll roll the window down and he's like no you can't smoke <laughs> like, nope. and i was like huh yeah i wouldn't want to hurt the resale value on your tacoma you're right that's correct all right the way it works is it's my truck i know go fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> i also put it out you, you did know, yeah you know, you know. mikey i just learned a lot about you today it's just that <laughs> like that's 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 my bugaboo huh? <laughs> <laughs> good choice of words <laughs> right appropriate choice Glad of you words thought that one through um I don't know how anybody could fuck those two words up. That dude's a racist. There's no fucking. And it, it, it was also it was such a smooth delivery. Yeah, that my favorite comment was like all the time. Nobody says it that smooth unless you have used it recently. Fucking a, and it's so real. Because it was one of those such an old I, school racist terms. I forgot it was a thing until I saw that clip. I, I already like, forgot what the word is. Yeah, exactly. Because I heard it like twice now. Yeah, yeah. Because you're not racist. You're just intolerant. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Mostly, you just don't like people. Yeah, you don't like people. Oh, I don't think. I don't oh, think it I like people. Really matters. I know you like persons. I figured it out. <laughs> I figured it out, right? Because I always used to say I fucking hate people, but I don't. I really like people. Like I really do. What I hate is I hate my expectation for how people should be in general. This is the, remember remember me talking about my toxic trait. Yeah. My toxic trait is expecting people to not be fucking stupid. That's it. And then I'm mad at myself yep. because they're <laughs> still fucking stupid. The internet yep. pissed yeah. me off the other day. So there's certain yeah. things I like to watch on the internet because I just find them whatever. Sure. But what's the big thing? Satisfying? Like all those videos that were running on of people like pulling the like screen protectors off of TVs and shit. And oh, everybody yeah, just yeah. likes that. So I like that my, guy that rolls those fucking paint jars down the stairs and, and they break and explode. Yeah. I'm, so I one of mine those. <laughs> is I, I like watching people wrap cars. Okay. Like wrapping cars in vinyl and yeah, stuff like I, that. Cause it's like this big stretch and then they like hit it with a heat gun and then they just like fold it around the car and yeah. it's like, Hey, yeah, that was, yeah. that was slick. Yeah. But like that is kind of nice. Yeah, I, I like that thing, but it's with latex. I, yeah, there you a go. Different website. A different website. <laughs> Much different. So 
Yes. But because I watch some of that <laughs> stuff, demo. of course, my feed now wants to show me like anything that has to do with rapping. And one of them is a shop trying to sell vinyl or like, hey, come to us yeah. and we can get you this cool vinyl. I'm like, I don't care. So, but it was a dope car that they were rapping. And so they were talking about the film and I was just kind of watching it. And the guy went, well, this is black to red, iridescent. And I was Wrong. like, I'm done. I'm fucking, you're yep. d- uh, like done. I literally it. like blocked it. And I was like, nope. I was like, you, no, I don't care. You should have let somebody watch this. Because <laughs> like, uh, there's no way. There's no way you've never heard the term iridescent. Yeah. It, like, iridescent. You read this and you don't know how to read. That's yeah. what that is. Yeah. Like, which, yeah. oh, God, it's terrifying. It's, it's, it's terrifying. I'm worried about our leaders now. And then I look at the generation coming behind me that's eventually going to lead. And I'm like, fuck. There's, it, like, <laughs> there's, there's branding I saw at, the trade show. Oh, now this ought to be great. Or a, uh, I don't know if it was a, a brand that launched or if it was a spinoff from somebody else or whatever, but the tagline was something along the lines of smoke like you're overseas or smoke like you're, what was it? Smoke like a foreigner. Let's just say it's smoke like you're overseas because yeah. I can't remember the exact words, but it was Y O, no. Yeah, Y O U R. Smoke like your right. I own the overseas. Overseas, yeah. Not my overseas. Your my overseas. overseas, right? And it was on all the branding on the booth. It was on his shirt. It was on the flyers. It was on fucking everything. And at first, I'm like, "Whose brand is that?" And they're like, "Oh, it's this guy." And he walks over. And then at that moment, I was like, "I don't really have the heart to tell this yeah. dude." <laughs> oh, but like. You have to, though. You have to. I did. I just let it go. Oh, God. Nope. I just let it go. I do want to give a shout out to someone. Yeah. Uh, Chris Raymond. Good old Chris. Who He came came by the bar before he moved. Yeah. Said hi. He came by Palatka. That didn't surprise me. He was on his way to Lauderdale. On his way. Yeah, we told him that he's going to be in the area. Mike. Nice. Yeah. So he swung by. Yeah, he saw everybody. We've and, actually, uh, we we got a goodbye gift from him. Yeah. It's just not on the table right now, but he brought us a, a bottle of... He had to get in my office. Yeah, yeah. He, he had mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. I know where it is. Oh, the, the, <laughs> the basil is it's in there? Basil, yeah. right. He brought us, he brought us a, a yeah. nice bottle. Oh, he told me. and Because uh, he's Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I play video games with Chris, so I've, I've been yeah. talking to him the whole time. He's uh, he's there. He's settled. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, first day of work was yesterday, so when you listen to this, bud, I hope everything's like, going uh, on. Well, he, I kind of felt bad because he had hit me up the night before, and we were supposed to have a weather day. It was supposed to be a real uh, shitty day. And I was like, I probably have some time to hang out and fuck around. Well, it turned out, because the only thing more Florida. bipolar than fucking Florida man is the weather there. Uh, it turned out to be a great jump day, so I was working the yeah. whole time, right? So I'm sitting there, like, talking to him while, like, I'm doing JMPIs and shit while yeah. he's, like, standing there and shit, right? And at one yeah, point, so you know, the other day, hold squat, yeah. and then we went over. <laughs> yeah, so like literally, like uh, there was a female jumper, and I'm doing the fucking JPI on her. And as I'm doing the fucking checking leg straps, I, in the middle of my JPI, I just look at Chris. I go, "You say a fucking word to this about about this to Haley? I'm gonna beat your ass." <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was just like you know, I was just working, you know, like. Um, but uh, no, I thought it was fucking cool that he uh, that he stopped by. So thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah, he, unfortunately, like it. he stopped by here like the day after our big St. Patty sale, and we were so busy. oh yeah, we yeah, didn't hardly hang out. But yeah, he uh, but he, he brought me a flag for uh, one of his like online groups that oh, yeah. uh, he, nice. that he wants me to jump in uh, in in my pocket in uh, Normandy. Yeah, and I'm gonna have all the guys in the drop zone sign it and shit for him and stuff. So sweet. Yeah, man, it's it is cool, dude. It I'm was gonna cool, give you a so. Warhammer mini to jump into Normandy. Let me know. I'll do put it. Put it back in my army. Yeah, you're gonna Let's have like it. a backpack of flags to jump. I have a bunch of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Mine's, yeah just take that big flag you have in your normal backpack and put these flags in there. <laughs> <laughs> just sew them all together. Um, so uh, I do I'm just get, gonna hang a flag and say you jumped it into Normandy. I do got a little bit just more scribble on it a bunch. More I think info it's too. about my Normandy jumps. Um, I'm gonna be a jump master on one of the jumps into uh, I believe Saint Marguerite. Nice. Uh, and then Moshe Michelle, I'm a jumping safety for, which is dope. Um, and then I'm going to be a skydiving safety into uh, one of the other fucking yeah. drop zones. I just and love that this is expensive LARP. <laughs> it's, well, it's commemorating. So you're role playing as the guys that jumped into it, and you're not doing at all. It, and you're doing it live action. No, not at all. That's LARP. 
It would be LARP, but it's that's not at all what they're doing. But uh, it's it's only LARP if he hits the ground and starts killing a bunch of people. Yeah, the, the, if I if I, I jump down and start fucking going pew 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 and lightning bolts, <laughs> <laughs> then I would say yeah. It's You're gonna LARP. put a costume in and jump into a reenactment of a combat zone. That's not, not that's a live action role play. That's not a reenactment though, because we're actually jumping into a combat zone. I'm not using a fucking foam so, sword to sword fight people. I think I didn't we, say we were foam sword. We just <laughs> now <laughs> we just now figured out the exact meaning of patriotism. <laughs> it's still role playing. It's it's not though because I'm not trying to be like them. The Ren Fair is role play. That's mm-hmm. LARPing. Hundred percent. Yeah. I think you dress up and you go to a fair and act like you're in that, medieval yeah. times. Like I, I would. You I eat would, steak on a stick and turkey legs. I would admit and you fucking drink I admit, mead. Like I would admit how that the fuck is this not? It's totally. It's totally yeah. role play. Yeah, I would admit that it's cosplay to an extent, which is role play. Yeah, this is something wrong. Tomato, with it. tomato. But, but, <laughs> but at the same time, it's cosplay a, it's, is just expensive role playing. This <laughs> those motherfuckers have so much money wrapped up in that shit. But it's also this is a sport. Like that's that's what it is. Like I mean. I can do without all the fucking hua bullshit that RCBT has because when it comes down to it, we're doing a sport. You're jumping out of planes. It's just like I've God, never you, heard but somebody you're doing def- a reenactment. Yeah. I've yeah. never heard somebody defend LARPing so much. I'm not like saying it's a bad right thing, now. but it's, it's yeah. definitely rolled. Yeah. I don't know. Here's 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 my take on it. Uh 80 years ago the world got saved by really brave fucking men and women, right? Yeah. And I'm paying homage to them. Yeah. That's, no, that's, it doesn't mean we can't I'm give not, a shit. I'm not trying to be them. It's a commemorative thing. Yeah. It's it's. Uh, I think commemorative and yeah, but the same guys that go do like the Civil War reenactment to keep that history alive and stuff. Those are role playing. Yeah, like, but it's okay, Mikey. In, in two weeks, we're gonna go dive, uh, and there's gonna be a, a Dev Crew guy down there diving. Yeah. And so essentially, we're LARPing like we're Navy SEALs. We're gonna be pretending to be <laughs> Navy SEALs. Yeah. Still LARPing. <laughs> I think that's only if we have guns and rebreathers and shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, and, it's like and, the, and hair. The you, round, you, know, and hair. The, you know the shitty part about all the guys that ha- are in like um, special operations that do all the diving and rebreather certs and have fucking a million hours on a rebreather? Those rebreathers aren't like civilian capable. Yeah. When you get certified on rebreathers, you're certified on a specific rebreather. No shit. It's just, it's, it's like that brand it's like and a that specific brand model. That and that's that how you one. get the and That's what you get to use. They do because this, they're all slightly different. They do the same thing for uh, tandem instructors. Yeah. You get, you get certified on a certain parachute system. Yeah. You can't use like another dude's tandem fucking yeah. parachute system. If it's a and so brand, yeah. when these guys get out, they have all this experience, but they have to start day one. And you need a hundred hours on a rebreather, a minimum, to become an, instru- uh, an instructor for rebreathing. Yeah. So they, even though these guys have thousands of hours of doing this shit, or however long they have, over. well, it, the smart thing would be to say buy the one the military uses. We can't. It's like forty grand. <laughs> and re- rebreathers are not cheap, but the ones the military use. Mm. But there's only like two or three really popular ones that people use too. Yeah, I was talking to Nick about it yesterday. Yeah. He was telling me the same thing. Because I guess well, they rebreathers got like three are of them Star coming. Wars canon. So if you're diving with a rebreather, you're just Star Wars LARPing. That is Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Who, which came first, Star Wars or rebreathers? <laughs> rebreathers. Sci-fi almost always beats real tech. To the, I mean, like. Go watch old Star Trek and everything they're reading on is those ultra thin tablets. And that's what they're so reading on. And stuff the, like that. And the, the OG, later. The, like the it's, OG re- rebreather yeah. was. Uh, yeah. Rebreathers came first. Was but. other animals internal pieces that they would use and they'd fill it up with air and they'd use that to breathe in and out of before like scuba became scuba. Yeah. Huh. But so, even like sheep gut and shit. Yeah, like stomachs or lungs or other I think shit that seals and holes air. And they it's just essentially fucking, it's yeah. essentially just before we came up with an acronym because that that is still technically a self contained underwater breathing. One hundred percent. Which is they just didn't know that they they just didn't have that. a coin. Yeah. they just didn't have a like this is how I fish. <laughs> <laughs> Eighteen seventy eight was there the first rebreather. rebreather. Yeah. That is a interesting. Oh. I don't. I mean, there was probably sci fi back then, but they didn't. <laughs> Mary Shelley actually holds the title of the inventor of sci-fi with Frankenstein. And when was that? Ooh. Late 1800s. Yeah, say 1880s, I'd say. Mary Shelley actually gets the title for the inventor of oh. sci-fi. I don't know. When did, when did Frankenstein come out there? 1920s, 1920s. It's 18 years. 1818. Wow. 1818. Wow. That was way fucking off. Did she talk about Wait, rebreathers? You were 100 <laughs> years off. <laughs> How did it come out as a play? 
It was a book. It was a book. Oh, a book. Yeah. The <laughs> first film was released in 1931. Yeah, okay. but the book came out. In it was thinking, I was film. thinking the movie. But Mary Shelley actually gets the title for the inventor of inventor of sci-fi. Huh. But uh, but yeah, if you're uh, if you're putting on a a costume to go do something else, yeah, to reenact that, then that's that's role play. I that's and you're doing it live action, so that's that's larping. And we don't kink shame role play. Go for it. I I I, I, I disagree, but uh, I hear your I hear your argument because I, I feel like when you're you just don't like the acronym application. Well, I feel like when you're larping, you're not risking anything. Whereas I'm still risking physical fucking harm by jumping, <laughs> right? Like, it, well, I mean, it, the guys that do the European uh, middle no, granted, martial I'm not arts. Sh- I'm not getting shot at. <laughs> like, like, but the guys know. that do Emma, the European medieval martial arts stuff, uh, and they're wearing steel and getting hit with a fucking sword, yeah. they're risking, that's still LARP. See, I, w- I wouldn't even call that LARP. It's, that's like, again, I think that's more like a sport. It, 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 nobody is saying that they are mutually exclusive. I don't think what you're doing is a sport. What are you competing? I guess so, there is not really much yeah, that, of a competitive nature there. No. No. Well, it's just like skydiving is a sport. And I don't no, really compete with that. Really. People just it give be. it the sport title. Sure, it's physically demanding. Well, it can be a sport. Well, it can yeah. be physically demanding. So I have a way a different definition of, a of skydiving than a sport. Yeah. You what? It was skydiving. It's, 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 I mean, you could classify it as a sport if you want. But the reality, when you break it down to the, to the basics of it, you're committing suicide and then saving it's your own saving life. yourself. Yeah, <laughs> every single time you jump out yeah. of the plane, you're like, "Fuck it, you," yeah. and you're like, "Ah, just kidding." <laughs> I, I, I jumped a uh, I jumped a shoot that a 14 year old kid packed for me. Yeah, so all that is <laughs> that's just a how good is your timing? That's a yeah. Well, it's a win or lose. They say scuba is a sport too. Yeah, but the, and there's no competitive there, is there? Well. I, <laughs> like is, is, is competitive there, is there competitive school? i don't know i, I saw that like, one video of you during your fucking and oh and that looked shit beat out of me that looks <laughs> sport underwater S- ufc yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that looked uh that yeah. one i'm that, gonna give you sport on that, that one. that's that a, stre- was, a stress dive for your dive master yeah and i saw that video it was really fun that looked sport s that's why that's why i was asking you if anyone's doing their dive master on this trip and i was like i fucking can't wait <laughs> <laughs> you just fuck with oh my god yeah. You'll get your you chance because apparently your I'm, I'm tapped jump? for it. Well, because there's a handful of things that you can do underwater that completely defines if somebody's comfortable or not. Yeah, sure. And but like, now apply that to skydiving. It's like, it, look, be, you're going to jump out and then six dudes are going to come and just fuck with you the whole well, the, fucking time. But you're going the down. biggest the biggest difference <laughs> is during that stress test, if that guy freaks the fuck out, I can hand him my spare reg and he's going to be totally fine. Well, you have safety. If we do the same thing with a skydiver. I can't be like, oh, just kidding, bro. Let me clip into you real quick, and I got you. I mean, you could in theory, <laughs> but that's not how reality works. Let me, oh, just come down, let me come down and just remove your rig for you midair. <laughs> yeah, now, now put it back on before you hit the ground. Ready? Go. <laughs> well, like, like, hey, Travis Pastrana did it, and he was fine. Yeah, that's true. Travis Pastrana is also fucking psychotic. Yeah. Do you see that? He's that, a monster, but you, psychotic. There's this video that's been coming across my feed lately, and it's this dude that um, he was a uh, he filmed skydiving. And he was so excited to film this jump that they were doing that he went out with the guys that jumped and he did have a shoot on. Yeah. They didn't realize it until fucking he already left the plane. Yeah. And I'm like, how the fuck do you get in the fucking plane knowing you're about to jump without having a shoot on? This is actually yeah. the problem I have with almost every skydiver I've always met. But I believe he died. Uh, uh, well, he didn't make any more videos after that. <laughs> <laughs> Present company excluded. I know you're very safety oriented, but most of the skydivers I have met... Uh, I get it. Like you can kind of get comfortable with your hobby and there's things that you can argue are just but muscle memory. Complacency and, kills. But complacency oh, kills. That's with anything. And yeah. the problem I have with skydivers is that it can get too fucking casual with these people. And that, that it's, and it's a, a, and it's in any of those kind of extreme sports skydiving, the guys that do like the big mountain snowboarding and shit like that. And they're, they, they or like those huge wave surfers and yeah, shit. Yeah, and they kind like, of don't check themselves. And it's like, no, nah, I'll figure it out. And it's like, yeah, you know what, though? Gravity doesn't give a fuck. That's oh, like gravity is always on. Oops. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, always, I will it's, say that the, the circles that I jump in, um, like every one of them, even like my fucking big stoner buddies that are fucking clearly high all the time and fucking like, you know, like, but they're skydivers. The only time I see them being serious 
is, is when they're going to go j- when yeah, they're going to jump. Gravity. Yeah. You know, and, and, and which I appreciate, you know, because you're right. There are there is that There's, class out there that are, we call those sky trash. Yeah. All right. That's sky trash. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. They're, they're, yeah they're it's amazing good, they how that trash term fucking... pops up all the time because you can find like ski trash and all that right. kind of stuff. It's a pretty universal like, term. Like, as soon as you say it, you get it. Yeah. Like, You're like, ah. I went I did snowboarding ever... one time and left with a concussion. And then you watch these other dudes that are like, yeah, I'm not checking shit. Yeah, I know it. I know like there's a massive avalanche warning, but yeah, it's not going to happen to me. And it's like, <laughs> okay. I tell people, I tell students this all the time. I'm like, I'm like, because the, especially ones that are scared when the door opens, I'm like, listen, man, if you're not scared when that door opens, you're not a person, you know, like the, like the I, day that your butthole stops puckering, stop yeah. jumping. I, I'm afraid <laughs> until I'm stop. under canopy. Yeah. Once my like for static line, once sure. once that opens and I'm like, oh, like, ha, fucking made it. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, because yeah, I mean? after that, it's like, OK, now I'm the master of my own destiny. That's it. Now yeah. it's on me. Yeah. But uh, okay. until then, I'm relying on so much other shit. <laughs> Like I just got a brand new rig, right? Yeah. Like a brand new container and all this. And it's, it's fucking like literally art put it together for me in Palaka this time. And I, I nice. jumped it for the first few times. I, I've got like a free fall rig. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, uh, it's fucking dope. It's black multicam. It's yeah, fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. It, it's super comfortable. It feels like I'm getting hugged. Oh, um, so that means I'm not wearing like student shit anymore and yeah. all this. So it's like, uh, it's just, it's a nice feeling to have your own gear. Right. And, uh, uh, even jumping that like, with the level of comfort like i wanted to pull a little high because i wanted to make sure and you know like, yeah. and all this so i pulled it like six grand my first jump with it and uh which is extremely high you know i like six so like, like 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 I, I normally pull it like three eight yeah you know so it comes out by about four or by about two yeah. ish you know because you usually get about four second snivel or whatever um so uh yeah I, like I, I pulled it like 6k on this one and it was because i wanted to feel it i wanted to steer i wanted to see how the canopy control worked and all this right. and stuff and it was great it's fucking awesome um it was just you know uh there is there is a level there where it's like for that fucking brief moment you're like, well, that's like, <laughs> <laughs> like well, i'm not jump certified but i grew up in an airborne household and like you go through all the and literally one of the stages of the jump is literally like you look up and check canopy. Yep, like check that's, canopy gain canopy control. Yep. It like that's, that's like your a second, whole that is your second point of performance. It's like a whole thing. And so And that's the same in squares. Is it there? Is it square? Can it, I steer it? it yeah. And yeah. so, you know, that that whole like what you said is like, I'm not comfortable till I am literally that's under it. the canopy and I'm now sort of and I'm and honestly sort of in control well, that's of what how it is. I descend. You're, yeah. 100%. And it's only pseudo control. Like you were still you were still at the mercy, at the mercy of, of, of gravity oh, and yeah, wind. Yeah. Like that oh, is- yeah. Well, that's why, like, I look at these guys who jump, like, T10s, T11s. And, like, they're like, we want to jump these for fun. I'm like, <laughs> no. No, dude. These are made for mass tax, man. These aren't made for like, fun jump. They're not them fun. anymore. Like, I mean, well, the 82nd Airborne does because it's the only way they could mass tack people right but because you had steer bowls with that group of fucking oh morons. my god holy shit yeah <laughs> right? i've like, seen that shit happen in brag and these are the dudes that jump them and cut them and open just because they can yeah it, like yeah but like the, what the shit that i jump like mc1s mc6s sf10s and as far as rounds go those are all steerable canopies man like set 10 set 10 xls you can steer these and what's funny is like you can't break them like you can a sport rig because really your brakes are the wind that's why you need to know which fucking direction the wind right. is coming you gotta you go turn into the wind. the wind and that's what slows your shit down but that and but that's the most control you have yeah you know and it's like uh, that's why with the square it's like a little bit different you have more control well i think the difference is you, you can fly a square yeah. You can turn in a round one. Correct. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's not really steerable. It's you can you can turn in a steerable. But you can't if you're jumping around. You can climb the riser as you much can as you literally want have to. Fucking, fucking nylon there. in your hand and yeah. that fucking still Well that's yeah, I didn't that, go that, I didn't change that, direction. Yeah. <laughs> I like how the airborne infantry guy in the corner is literally like, yeah. <laughs> I've I've climbed a few risers in my day and that shit don't do fuck That'd all. Do <laughs> how many but jumps you did jumped, you have? How many jumps did you have? Uh, military before you went and did into the civilian somewhere sector. around 50 yeah yeah that's enough to go which yeah which is why work. rcbt is fucking awesome because that was the first time i ever or the second or third time i ever jumped steerable and yeah. that shit's fucking it's money so it's nice. so much nicer oh, dude yes yeah. and the landing soft and you're only oh, yeah. jumping <laughs> with like 
three, four other people, unless you're jumping like the Tico and then you're still only with like 10 other or people. Or you're jumping a Cessna. Well, we did, we did, you. we had two birds this time. We had two 47s. So we were doing fucking like, like dual pass. Oh, yeah, really? Like, so those cool. videos look sick. They were dope. It was dope, man. All well, the horse soldiers, they kicked a barrel. Like they, they did a barrel pass. And like, I was in the DZ and just doing the math and trying to figure it out. And, and like, you know, like, yeah. I mean, like, uh, it, was, like it was me and uh, John Hofstad and we were there. And he was like, where do you think they're going to land? I was like, one's going to land here. One's going to land here. And sure as fuck. Boom, boom, you know? <laughs> and those, they kicked them out on T-10s. Yeah. You know, they had, because the, RCBT does have T-10s now. They use them for water jumps. Yep. <laughs> and, yeah, because, it doesn't matter. Who gives a shit, right? right. <laughs> like, yeah, you're landing in the water. Who gives a fuck? Like, oh, you did a downwind landing in the water? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Boo, boo. yeah. <laughs> you know, like, no, okay. No, you're fine. <laughs> like, right? Like, um, Speaking of water, I think we got to talk about this Baltimore thing. Mm. Uh, Before that, I've been dying to know where did you put your finger that it didn't belong? Oh uh, well, after two weeks of three weeks of not being around my wife, I went to go in for a shocker, and it just fucking she clenched. Yep, you that's know, fair. Like, that makes yeah. sense. No, actually, all the jumping and crazy shit I did, I tripped on a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> like wasn't riding the bike. Yeah, I tripped and stepped on a bike that was laying behind me that I didn't know was there, and rather than getting impaled by the pegs, it was a BMX bike. I decided to bail this way, and I. You don't take it's it not off, been it's confirmed fine. that it's broken, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like it's yeah, whatever. They heal. It'll heal. They it's, heal a little twisted. It's like something. I've got shit'll buff. It's like I've got fingers that it, it that fucking sting though. I'll give it that. But steady diet of Motrin well, and Jameson's so, been helping out. Yeah. So let's get back to Mikey's hometown. <laughs> so. Here's one thing. I love it because that hand's broke, so you can't hit me with it. Uh, Mark, <laughs> here's here's one thing I want to say to this to, to all of our listeners, and I'm already seeing memes on our page and stuff like that. We don't know what happened, and Americans lost their lives in this accident. So if we could knock off the the pilot was taking selfies or whatever the fuck until we figured out why these Americans died for no fucking reason, yeah, that would be a class fucking Cause, act. Because these are uh, construction workers. These aren't fucking. Yeah, they were know, construction workers. Apparently, like twenty or thirty cars. Because it was like three in the morning or oh, something like that. Under the water. Maybe. There's six people. And cars. so, but people yeah. are now dead, and we don't know why. And what so, sucks is like their families are waiting at the fucking gas station by the beginning of the bridge, yeah, like, like waiting so for them and shit. It's maybe fucked up. maybe we hold off on the whole making fun of who is piloting the ship until we figure out why these Americans are dead, and then then we can. Go with the jokes, but until yeah. then, let's 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 get the why out of the way. Let's figure out what yeah. the fuck actually happened. I believe it was on purpose, but we will never know the real reason why. And the reason that I think it was on purpose is the track that that ship took from when okay. it left port. <laughs> well, you got to think of from when it left port because it left port uh, inland from where the bridge was. Yeah, yeah, it left port in Baltimore Harbor, right? Yeah. And so it pulled out of port. It did a big ass U turn to head towards the bridge. It was on a straight line in about. I don't know, a minute 45 before it actually impacted. It, started it changed to direction. I'm not saying you're now, wrong. Now, if you talk to it's anybody also- that has anything to do with a, a ship of that magnitude and you ask them, if you lose power, can you change course like that ship did? And they're going to be like, mm, that's not There's how no it way. works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Physics is a thing. Well, so there was, there was a question. I was listening to it on the way here. And they said there there was a question about whether or not they dropped anchors to try to and try to stop steer it, not steer it, but stop it. But yeah. if, and then they like completely lost power three minutes before they hit the bridge. Like all the lights went yeah, out yeah. and everything. So I don't know. But, hmm. And there's other stuff know. like you look at like what happened with the canal when it, that boat was, got stuck because the pilot didn't know what they were doing and shit like it was, so shit happens. But Americans are now dead because of it. It was yeah. crazy how that bridge crumbled though. It's an old fucking bridge, it's man. An old bridge. I've been on, it's I've not been on the key bridge for what, a while. How much <laughs> do you think that ship weighed? Well, they said it was a hundred yards smaller than an aircraft carrier, but so, it, was, it was full they, of containers. Sheer weight. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you oh, take yeah. out a center mass on, and essentially they did hit center mass on the bridge and yeah. it dropped it. Because there's the, only two big main supports. Everything else is smaller support. The they hit one of the main supports. Well, and it's all cable is, supports. Now you know that city pretty well. Yeah. That bridge is not a the suburbs feed Baltimore with that with that inlet running. Oh, it's through a major it. inter- intercourse. That bridge is part of an interstate highway. Yeah, yeah. I think it's six ninety five. Uh, I believe it is. I think it's six ninety five. Two ninety five. There's something it's one, one of the two. There's but something it's, like thirteen million 
there, vehicles that is, pass that bridge every year. That is a major interstate. Yep. But that, that bridge is no longer functional on to one of our major and, cities. And not only that, Baltimore is a major port that is now Huge. closed yeah. indefinitely. Clo- because as an intermodal port, so an intermodal port means that things come into there, they get put on trucks, and then they go back out and typically would get on the major interstate in order to get goods and services from that intermodal port to where the fuck it's supposed mm-hmm. to go. That port now no longer has direct access which if it's if this was an attack to a major it's, highway that's my, infrastructure that's an right. infrastructure attack but so my again i say if you were going to put funny memes out about the fact that this happened fucking pump your brakes until we have some more information there's dead americans that are involved with this cuz it could be an attack and this could my, be something my my serious. comments on uh how it, it was amazing how it crumbled wasn't to be like conspiratorial that, right. that it was an, a, an attack. It just like you would, I would have guessed that like part of it would have fell and then the rest of it would have been unstable. Yeah. But that fucking thing came down in like, seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, it was, also, that's crazy. Which fucking has, terrifies me how many times I've been on that fucking bridge, man. Right. Because like, it was, it's, it's how, I don't know how long it is. It looked like maybe half mile. It's pretty, it's a it's, mile and a half. It's, yeah. It's pretty long. Mile and a half. Yeah. yeah it's pretty long. Maybe. But like Mikey wrong, said, there's but, only two major supports that yeah. everything else is just kind of a regular. Like a support. It machine. looked to me like because I'm not familiar and, with it, uh, but it looked to me like it was cable supported. It, it's it's it is so, a cable. It is what's known as a suspension bridge, yeah, so yeah. it's mostly cable yeah. supported. But when you take out the middle of it, it's kind it, of the fucking it, it, yeah, meat and that's, potatoes that's right a, there, man. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. So. And it's, it's named for Francis Scott Key, uh, and and it's it, they put that bridge there in uh, 1977. I had to look it up earlier. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. It's 1,200 feet. But they say that that so is the main mile. span. That bridge is. Uh, about the approximate area that the ship that he was being held on when he wrote the national anthem. That's where that ship was uh, like. St- yeah. So the total yeah. length is 1.6 miles. Okay. So you can see Fort McHenry from that. Yeah. But longest span is 1200 feet. Yeah. Longest span between supports. Yeah. yeah. The bridge. Yeah, that's is the main, that's the main yeah. span. And they hit the, and, the, the one of the main supports. Yeah. And so it doesn't really matter. You, you take no. out something where you only have two major supports so, and you've got 1200 feet of bridge yeah. on either side. It's coming down. Yeah. See or hear Biden's press conference about this. No, no. I, d- I can't watch him anymore. I, well, I didn't watch him, but I just read the cliff notes on it. And so one of the things that sticks out to me is he said in his press conference that the United States government will pay the entirety to replace that bridge. Why isn't that ship's shipping or insurance company <laughs> paying for it? Yeah. It sounds to me because it's a Singaporean uh, ship. That, right? that doesn't matter. It sounds to me like and Singapore honestly, should be paying for a yeah, fucking bridge. No, yeah. no. If you're in your car right now and you go hit a fucking telephone pole, yes. guess who's fucking paying However, for it? However, my Texas registration is a far cry from how ships and their country registration. Oh, 100%. That, that ship is not owned by Singapore. That's like no, saying no, that no. If, if you. But they, if, should, they have insurance. Sure. But if so, if you buy a private plane. Yeah. And you crash your private plane. Is the United States responsible for your private plane? No, my insurance. Wait, wait, companies. hold on. Your, but you, you would have an American flag on the side of it. Is the country responsible for I'm not, your private? I'm not aircraft? saying Singapore should be responsible for it. Not so, but he's saying the shipping company <laughs> and their insurance and their insurance company. should, yeah. and, and I guarantee they'll be gone after for it. Yeah. No, but, because Biden said the U.S. government is okay, but the U.S. government's a fucking idiot. It is, but I guarantee you that they're going to, like, Facts. why even say it? That's like I've had one attempted yeah. <laughs> lawsuit on my store with that guy that yeah. claimed I he got injured trying to open my bathroom door. And my employee went to go like, oh, my God. And I was like, stop talking. It, like, and the first thing we did is that we I asked, are you okay? Yeah. Can I get you some water? Like, can I make you more comfortable? We never once said. I'm sorry, I'm sorry yeah. this happened. Yeah. How do we help? Like that was, no, you just shut your fucking mouth until everything's fucking done. And then when he tried to sue me, my insurance company came in and asked me, how do you want to handle this? And my response was, sue his grandchildren in debt. And the Hartford insurance group said, don't worry, our our lawyers are on it. Yeah. So yes, Yeah. our idiot government running their fucking mouth before the rest of the information came out because they thought it would make a good tweet. Yep. That's where we're at. 
because now they've claimed responsibility. Mm -hmm. Well, at least fiscal responsibility for it. Right. But you can't look at Singapore because that's where the ship was from and go. I didn't even know that was where the ship was. And, and well, that was all over the, it's just like, well, it's registered in Singapore. And I'm like, yeah. okay. They registered that fucking thing wherever the best tax rate was for running that fucking ship. They don't actually give a shit where I it's think from. the insurance company, because fuck them, should be responsible for that bridge because what a fucking racket insurance is. Anything and everything that burns insurance, I'm 100% with you. Yeah. Because fuck them. My old State Farm agent, well, her handler tried to call me and was like, you haven't been with us for a couple of years. We were wondering if we could re-quote you or whatever. And I was like, as soon as you have my actual agent from State Farm call me and explain to me why every month my bill changed and consistently went up with a new fucking excuse, yeah. then maybe I'll let you re-quote me. So you have her call me. <laughs> All right, I'll pass the notes on. Guess who I've never heard from? Right. Insurance is a fucking racket. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so if you can get the if you can get the insurance for Jesus, current tax rate current rates on rebuilding a mile and a half long bridge. Yeah. Sure. Bankrupt whatever fucking company had that fucking yeah. insurance policy. Mm -hmm. Uh I just saw the video of it. Our government paying for it? it? We we can't pay for anything else. We're broke. <laughs> right. It, That's like, what I mean. Like <clears throat> We're spending at $1 trillion a year in interest on Maybe debt. Ukraine should pay for our bridge. They can afford it. You mean? Never mind. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. But. Oh, I got a story. Oh, fuck. Hell yeah. I was at the show and a Kuwaiti guy came up to me. By the way, this is. Oh, I was at the trade show. This, this is a cigar trade show. Cigar trade We show. keep saying show, but it's the, the cigar trade show where the Warfighter boys were all at. Yeah. PCA. By the way, did it go well? It went okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. The, uh, this Quady guy comes up to me and he's like, he decent English, but a little broken. And he's like asking me about the cigars. And he's like, oh, what is Warfighter? You know, I'm like, well, we're veterans and it's Warfighter. He's, oh, it probably wouldn't be a very good brand for Kuwait. And I said, well, maybe not. You know, he's yeah. like, oh, he's, he, at first he's like, this is, does that, he's like, that's a dumb market. Like nobody likes veterans, you know? Well, he's not. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, well, maybe in Kuwait, you know, I said, but, you know, here, I, you know, it's a little different. Yeah. You know, and then he, we got into this fucking discussion about Israel and Palestine and right. And he's Jeez. like, you know, you know, essentially it was like, you know, oh, oh, he, if you followed it up with well, how many people did you kill? And I said, and, you know, coming from a Kuwaiti guy, like whatever, you know, so I said, well, I probably saved more than I killed. And he's like, uh, he has this look on his face like, well, I don't know how to argue that. And then it got into like, you know, well, the government's corrupt. And I agreed with him. And he's like, you know, why are you, you know, why does the U.S. government help in Israel? And I said, I don't know. You know, I said, uh, you know, whatever. And, and so he asked me another question. He's like, you know, he said, uh, uh, all the all the innocent people getting killed in, in Gaza. And, you know, is, Israel is like the the bad guy. And I said, well, what, what would you do right now if I punched you right in the face? <laughs> you know, and he's like, what, what do you mean? I said, well, I said, Israel didn't start this fight. I said, they, they punched Israel in the face and Israel's fighting back. You know, they're tired of getting punched in the face. Yeah. And uh, he's, he pretty much is like, well, I'll agree to disagree. But, you know, it's, it's not Israel's land. I'm like, I'm not even going down this road with you, man. You know, and so we, we shook hands and parted ways. But it was kind of a weird conversation from a, you know, there's one Kuwaiti in that whole show. Yeah. Know? It was just weird. But they're always at that. Well, show. what's weird to me is like, but I've you never, would, you would think a Kuwaiti would that's, be like, that's the first person I've ever met that's like, pretty sure in 91, we saved their country. You're right. Right. <laughs> like, like, that's not how they track history. Yeah. But I saw a video the other day. It, it's actually on this vein and it confused the shit out of me. And so, it was this, it, there's like a huge trend now of people going onto college campuses and just like doing these like on the street random interviews yeah. with college students. Yeah. The one I really like is there's this one dude that just keeps flying back and forth between Brigham Young University and Liberty University. <laughs> and he just flies back and forth and just <laughs> asks the students like what their favorite rules are and. Yeah. You know, would you rather have $5 million or five minutes with Joseph Smith? Or like, like just these weird <laughs> ass, like, entertains the shit out of me. Anyways, but I saw another one. It's not the same guy. And this guy was on this campus and finds this. I'm not going to lie. I don't know who she is, but she is a smoke show. Yeah. Redhead. I mean, just nice. Yeah. 
checking all the boxes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And she's Jewish. And I guess like she put something, he, he put something out. There was this huge response. Like, who is she? She's incredible. Da, 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 da. So we went and found her again. He was like, and she goes, I don't really like your, the comments on your stuff. I don't like how you handled the interview. Like she was very honest yeah. about the fact that like, you obviously did this reviews and I don't fucking like it. Yeah. He was like, okay, well then in your own words, what is your, what would you like to say to my followers? And she was like, be kind to another and free Palestine. And she went, and he went, well, you're Jewish. And she was like, yep. And I was like, this is the danger yeah. of that college age accepted default morality. Yep. Without knowledge like yep. that. That's the danger. And it's like, so well, it's just regurgitation of their fucking. And yeah. And that's the problem. And professors. So Did I can't she, remember who said it, but there's a, there's a guy that said that, uh, there's no such thing as an old liberal. Right. Like liberal is a luxury of the young. Maybe I'm looking at it from a different angle, but Israel is trying to free Palestine right now. Yeah. <laughs> they are. Freeing the fuck out of them. No, from a fucking <laughs> grip of a terrorist organization. Yeah. 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 It's true. But that's because the Jews are awesome. They are. So Jews are awesome. I've actually, I've, I know I said that on the show and it, everybody thinks it's a joke. I legitimately, I, that whole community has been nothing but fucking every interaction I've ever had with that community has been awesome. My friends that are Jewish business dealings that I've had, like the whole nine yards, they're all fucking great. Yeah. People don't know how to deal with them because they're almost too honest. <laughs> and they kind of don't know what to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. What is this, like, velvet? It, yeah. <laughs> but like you have a whole Beautiful. side of your family and you kind of understand what I'm talking about. We're <clears> like, <throat> unless you can deal with that level of just. Because some of it you're like. Pff. You just. Oh, did, did you say that out say loud? That. Like, oh, like, shit. Holy fuck. But then you think about it and they're like, well, they're not well, wrong. They're not wrong. <laughs> it's like they're, the phrasing may be a little rough. Yeah. But <laughs> the. The. the I hung out with one of our favorite Israelis. Oh, Emery. And there's a last prime week. example of a man that is probably too honest for his own fucking good. Fucking A. <laughs> Emery, I fucking love you, buddy. And I, I can't wait to fucking see you again. But, <laughs> but he, he, bro. Will, he will freely be like, my favorite thing to do, kill Muslims. <laughs> it's just like, God damn, bro. <laughs> He's like, I don't like Arabs. This motherfucker. I like I, <laughs> so, and he teaches uh, shooting, like how to be better. And mostly as a sport, this isn't even necessarily how to make yourself more lethal. It, it he's it, upgraded. It does recently. It does. <laughs> he's, he's he's been going back to Israel and it, helping. Look what Emory, <laughs> what Emory does and what Emory teaches are two different things. Facts. But what what mostly Emory teaches is if like if you were really into like two gun or three gun sport, uh, if you just want to be better at the sport of shooting, yeah, uh, which does have a competitive element. So we'll, we're going to give it the sport, but. I, I got I got the nod from Scott. He's going, yeah, yeah, no shooting. So if you go to the range by yourself, is it still a sport? No. Nope, that's masturbatory. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm into that. I like to masturbate. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Play with yourself. Play with a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Play with no longer friends. masturbation. Yeah. <laughs> that's, no, that's, just, rudder. that's just gay then. Well, well, depend, oh, my God. It, can it we start that contest? It. Can we please start that contest? What? So it's a two-gun competition, but your transition has to be done by your friend. I am so confused, oh. slightly <laughs> turned on right now. Mikey got it. And look at Mikey's face right now. He knows because he can picture him and I doing it, just going like, buddy. I need my I pistol. Need a, I need a pistol. Are there firearms involved in this? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, that just ruined it. John for just no. wanted a friend that was transitioning. <laughs> yeah, that ruined it for him. No. It, like, uh, it's, it's a two gun competition. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's two gun. You got to think it's shooting, but like the movie Ghost. Well, I mean, he did get a vasectomy. I'm just saying. <laughs> These aren't blanks, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to we need to coordinate this whole thing. This could be the first Freedom Friend shootout. Oh it's, 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 my! <laughs> <love>. Yeah, <laughs> Mikey. Hey, bro, rack this for me. <laughs> <laughs> we need to reload. <laughs> Just, I just unloaded my gun. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I need you to come over here and check my sight picture. How's my alignment? 
You're a little to the left, bud. <laughs> Can't confirm. <laughs> but Emory mostly teaches it as a the, the sport of shooting. Probably also in a gay way. But uh, like even the couple of tips he gave me, he was like, no, what you're doing is shit. And I'm like, <laughs> I hit the target. <laughs> I'm like, really? Because up to this point, it's been pretty effective. And he's like, no, shit. That's, Are you that's talking like, Emory or Rosin? Emory. That's how Emory handled it. Because Rosin is. He's a shit. That is fucking. And then Emory he's looked, so fucking good. Yeah, yeah. He spent five minutes actually did improve my shooting. And yeah. I was like, okay, we're leaving for tacos now, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, yeah. And okay, bud. Yeah. No, they're definitely good. They're, they're good at what they do. And if you actually, and actually, if I'll, I'll give them a plug. If you guys want to learn more about Emory and what they're doing, head over to Tactical Rifleman. Um, Carl and his crew, they do good shit. Uh, matter of fact, they're in Texas right now. Uh, they might be in the area, actually. Well, yeah. Yeah, they're good guys. Yeah. Anyways, this has gone on long enough. Yep. Mikey, do it. Uh, but it was nice to see you guys all again. Oh. And nice uh, all you fuckers at home, it's good to be back. Uh, like, share, subscribe, smash those buttons. Tell your mom. Tell your friends. Tell your fucking mom's friends. Let them bitches know. There's a mediocre show out there that, I don't know. We're here. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know either. Um, three little things. They're not really hard to do. Oh, you know what? Before that, I'm going to raise my glass. I saved just enough for the toast. Same. Cheers, boys. Thanks for Oh, I did learn friend. something about toasting. Oh. You have to toast with your left hand and make eye contact with the person you're toasting. Who said that? Um, the span, the Mexican the, Yeah, so I met I met these two guys from Mexico City. So the next time I go to Mexico City, uh, Manolo and Serge, heads up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the great dudes. They do tequila and whiskey. We'll uh, let ca- them steer, but yep. we'll, we'll ca- power the... They they uh, they own the Casa 1910 Lounge in Mexico City, and uh, which is affiliated with the brand Casa 1910. Um, nice. Just great dudes. We hung out with them for like three, four hours drinking, talking shit, making jokes. Yeah. And then... Uh, Found out that they live in Mexico City. And I was like, I was just there. And he's like, oh, next time you come, you come to my house, I make you dinner. I'm like, bro, don't tell me that. Fucking no. say less, bro. <laughs> fucking say less. Which dude. is also a prime example of the fact that fuck, go travel and meet other fucking people. Oh, yeah. But, yeah like, dude, get the fuck out of here. It, like it, that little echo chamber that you exist in, go fucking fix that shit. Find some people that. Yeah. Find some perspective. Use some other yeah. other things. But like Find this is one of the things I really love about the cigar industry, right? So they're, they, they're, they're with another brand. Right. And the guy's like, you come down to Mexico City, I will close down our lounge and I will bring in alcohol vendors and I will bring in food and we will hang out there and smoke and drink and eat all night long. I'm like, dude, you don't have to close the lounge down. He goes, no, I, I want you to have this experience. <laughs> well, I'm not going to fucking say no. You know what I mean? Well, like, right, I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> the biggest, thing, biggest thing I miss about the cigar industry is so like just take this table. If we were all in the industry and the four of us were all from different brands, the table still looks like this. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's cigars. And we've the show all, would still sound like this. Yeah. And, yeah. and we've all handed each other shit from our yep. brands. We're all drinking and there is zero animosity. Like it is just a, it, it's a little bit in the sales crew. I'm not going to lie on this, but that's well, their it's job. Competitive. That's their job. Yeah. They're supposed to be competitive, but God, the show. The, one of the big things I miss about the show was it was the one time a year where you saw all your friends yeah. and you're all technically competitors and you don't really meet competitors there. Like everything. Yeah. yeah. They're all your friends and they're from all different walks of life, all different viewpoints, all different products, all different everything. And it, it I've, I've been saying it for 20 fucking years, but cigars are, it's the great equalizer. I've never seen anything like it Right. to where it's a, Oh, you smoke cigars. Oh, we're friends. Now. Yeah, we're friends. Now. Like, <laughs> like it's, it's it's over. We're just yeah. friends. Um, I mean, fuck. That's how I became friends with Warfighter. Was I heard there was another friend of mine said that there's a cigar company coming to San Antonio, and I sent a message. It was like, used to be in the industry. Absolutely love it. Would love to meet more people. And it, God, and, and sh- taking naked pictures of John. And then I took naked pictures of John. Pants optional. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, we got through the rest of it. Uh, go forth and be awesome and fucking just think about the shit that you're putting out there. Yeah. Seriously. Like that's, that's all I can say. I I get jokes are out there. It it can be fun. And the internet is undefeated. The internet is undefeated. We get it. But you know, you also have the option to actually prove that you're a better human than the ones that are around you. So yeah, try for that. So three little things. They're not hard to do at all. Jazz. Fucking smoke on Scott. Ooh, drink on. God damn it. Kids. Freedom the fuck on. Later.